time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. The entire 49ers roster is peppered with players that are just completely versatile and can play multiple positions. Coming in at number 47, nobody fits that bill more than Kerry Hyder. He was number 35 last year. This year comes in at number 47, so dropped down a little bit. And I think a lot of that had to do with the versatility. He was kind of a victim of circumstance last year. We'll dive into that. But Kerry Hyder is Chris Kusarek, the defensive line coach's man. There is no doubt about it. And Hyder's put up some great numbers for the 49ers over the years. Got to give credit to Josh, the 49ers guru, background episode, uh, your research, and just all this kind of information that we get. Thank you so much, Josh. Now, Kerry Hyder wears jersey number 92 for the 49ers, and he has bounced around the NFL, signing one-year deals after one-year deal after one-year deal, uh, and just kind of has become an NFL journeyman. But whenever he's with Chris Kusarek, it's just an extra boost. His best three or four seasons all have been under Kuseri's reign. So he's an interesting guy whenever he came out of college because he was a defensive tackle, defensive end hybrid. Came in at 6'2", 275 pounds, uh, you know, shorter than most you know, defensive ends, heavier than most defensive ends, but lighter than the tackles, 33 and a half inch arms. He's 32 years old. He's been playing for a little bit. He's going into his ninth season, um, and he's just an interesting guy because you look at kind of his journey to the NFL, grew up in Texas, you know, down in Austin, Texas, played at uh, LBJ High School, the Jaguars, was a business um, major and got his degree there at Texas Tech. Guess who else is from Texas Tech? Chris Kusarek. So you start to see these overlaps, and it makes a little bit of sense, but Kerry Hyder has made his entire NFL career after being just, hey, I'm going to work harder and never stop playing. I'm going to hustle nonstop. That's it. That's how he's made his career. So I would I would argue he's probably not the most talented player. Um, you know, the metrics definitely would not suggest that he has a talented or, you know, elite frame. He's just a guy that works super hard every damn play, every season, every game, and cleans a lot of stuff up, and that's where a lot of his sacks come from. He's not somebody that's going to beat you off of the ball and just, you know, win immediately like a Bosa or Armstead or whomever. That, that's just not what he does. He just does not quit. Now, if we look into kind of the research of Kerry Hyder, cousin of former NFL cornerback Chris Houston, who was a six-year pro, um, Hyder was a two-sport athlete in high school basketball and football. He had offers from a lot of the kind of the tier two schools, Cincinnati, Iowa State, Minnesota, Toledo, Utah, chose to go to Texas Tech. Um, whenever he did, yeah, he played beyond well. He was, you know, all Big 12 first team, Dallas Morning News, all Big 12, all these different whatever. Um, defensive lineman of the year, honorable mention. All, I mean, he just... He put up stats at Texas Tech. There's no doubt about that. And I thought this was pretty cool. His wife, Jasmine, was a prominent track and field star at Arizona State, where she um, she made the 2011 World Championship team and competed at the 2016 Olympic Trials in the 400 meters. So a uh, couple athletes in the family. Um Came in as a defensive tackle, transitioned to defensive end in 2016. He lost 35 pounds, um, tried to get some of that speed back, and... That was his entire career at defensive end until last year. The 49ers lost five defensive ends early in the, or defensive tackles early in the year, and they said, Chris, or sorry, they said, Kerry Hyder, we got to have you go back inside, which he did um, admirably well despite losing all of that weight and tried to play up. You know, it's like a boxer that's trying to box up a weight class. He was just at a huge disadvantage, but the Niners had no choice. And this is kind of who Kerry Hyder is. Got it, coach. I'll do it. And, you know, he went in, and if you look at just the way in which he played last year, you know, he played 410 snaps. 217 of those were at the defensive tackle spot. So over half of his snaps were out of position. And I think that the the numbers reflected that. 52.1 PFF overall grade on defense, 43.5 run, 59.7 tackle, 57.9 pass rush, 66 um, you know coverage grade, just not great. 72 special team snaps. So 
I think the 49ers recognize, like, this is not your position. And, uh, you know, I've been going to all the training camp practices. He's not lining up at all <laughs> at defensive tackle, which is the best news for number 92. So he's back at end. He is solely working with the second team. So, I mean, he's right there. I do expect him to make this roster just because the 49ers are shallow at defensive end anyway. And they just love this guy. And they know if they asked him to go out and kick field goals, Kerry Hyder would say, yes, sir, and get out there and do his damn best job. Would he be good at it? I don't think so. Now, if we look at his career as a whole, um, what he's done since 2014 when he entered the league, 160 career tackles, 29 tackles for loss, 21 sacks, 58 quarterback hits, six fumbles recovery, four pass breakups, just all over the place. Now, last year, we looked at the PFF stats. What were his stats last year? He played in all 16 games. So for a team that could not keep a defensive tackle healthy, this dude played in every damn game um, except for one, and, and that wasn't even due to an injury. He had one start, 19 tackles, one tackle for loss, four quarterback hits, one sack. Not great. Um, just what really, again, you played out of position – at the NFL as an undrafted free agent, you're going to have a down year. He's got 87 career games played in, started 24. And as I said, he's bounced around the league. He's been with lots of teams, was, you know, started with the Lions, uh, was with the Jets, he jumps around back and forth with the Lions, on, off, on, off, then to the 49ers. Then the Seattle Seahawks signed him to a huge deal. And that's where he's received most of his money for his career because you remember he led the 49ers in sacks the 2020 year when Bosa got hurt and everybody else was hurt and whatever else. He had like nine and a half sacks with us. But he goes and signs a huge three-year deal with the Seattle Seahawks. They didn't know how to use him or coach him well. Um, just not very good on the defensive side of the ball the way that they utilized him. Cut him after one year, three-year deal. So if you look at what he's made for his career, his career earnings in nine years – 9.4 million. He's a back of the roster, $1 million kind of minimum, vet minimum type player, but he's just stayed in the game. And so he's been able to collect a lot of that money. And 3.6 million of that 9 million that he's made in his career came in that one year with the Seahawks when they had cut him and they pay, they, they're still paying him more than us, <laughs> which, hey man, that that's awesome. I love to see people get paid. Now, if we look at his current contract, the Niners brought him back one year deal, one point oh eight million, no guarantees. And, you know, I think it was day two or day three of training camp, he rolled his ankle and I was just like, Oh no. Because if this dude went through an injury with no guarantees, he'd be cut um or waived on an injury settlement, whatever else, and his career would probably be over. So thankfully the injury didn't pan out. But Kerry Hyder is one of those guys that's just a glue guy. The locker room adores him. He's been around the league. He knows what's what's up. He knows what he needs to do. Knows what everybody else needs to do. And on top of that, this dude's playing for his career. Um, how much longer does he have? I would say a year or two tops. I do think that he makes this roster, however. He's working on the second team. I think the defensive end position is one of the lightest positions on this roster. I know Nick Bosa is elite defensive player of the year and all those things. But outside of that, you've got Drake Jackson, Cleveland Farrell. I don't think that there is a lock to make this roster outside of those top three. So that's where Kerry Hyder comes in at number 47. Excited to see what he can do for the Niners back at the position he should have been in all last year. And with the strength now pivoting on the roster to the defensive tackle position, I think it's going to help guys like Kerry Hyder just stay where they belong, which is on the edge, and be able to get a lot better stats this year than what he did last year. So I'm excited to see what big number 92 can do this year. And for us, we'll just keep counting them down.